If you're using large language model AI like Claude, ChatGPT, Gemini, Perplexity, DeepSea, tools like that, but not getting the results that you want, it's not necessarily about needing a better tool, it's more about or giving it better inputs. Um, and the thing about AI is, you know, it's, a, it's very powerful, but it's unpredictable. So a lot of times it is not giving the best results, but it's more about probably how you're prompting it than it is about the actual like generic outputs that you're getting. So basically user error is what I'm saying. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is give you a framework that I'm using right now to kind of put together my prompts using, you know, this five step crops framework. Um, and just kind of explain that a little bit so that you can kind of understand how you want to give information to AI so that you can get the results that, that work the best for you. Um, and if you want this Google Doc, there'll be a link in the description below. Um, you can access it, just put your email and it, you'll access the um, Google Doc sheet. And then you can download this and use it as kind of like your template or guideline. Um, so basically like most people are prompting wrong and I've just kind of, I've played with generic prompts and then I've kind of created prompts based on this, this C-R-O-P-S. So basically the first thing is like context. So you want to give AI context. So like ChatGPT doesn't know what you're thinking yet. <laughs> um, but AI is more of a predictive model than it is anything. Um, but it, if you give it a structured contextual input, then these large language models will be able to give you accurate outputs um, that would best fit you. So you don't want AI guessing. So like, like, so basically what is going wrong is that if you're just saying, hey AI, uh, create me an email series for my email list. Well, first of all, they don't know what type of email list you have. They don't know who you're targeting. They don't know anything about it. It's just a very generic prompt. So what it does is it's going to basically go through and give you, if you if you prompt vaguely, it's just going to pull from millions of different patterns that it knows and recognizes within its ecosystem to give you some generic output. Um, so what you want to do to fix that is actually go through this process right here. Um, and I've tried to break it down just to be super simple. I've seen other people with similar acronyms and things like that. But for me, it was just like, okay, if I at least give the prompt these five things, I'm getting really good outputs. And then I can take the output that I'm getting and I can adjust that to make it work for what I need. Um, so, you know, with the context, you basically want to tell, you know, AI, like I'm creating a lead magnet for busy coaches who want to start using chat GBT in their content. Um, you're giving it some context to what it's trying to do. And then you want to give it a role. So you want to tell AI how to act. So you want to say you're, um, so like, it doesn't matter what niche you're in. If you're a fitness instructor, you want to say like, you are a fitness instructor that focuses on men and women over 50 that are just trying to get tone or whatever it is that you're trying to, whoever your target market basically is. You want to say like, you're a fitness expert. You're an email copywriter. You're an SEO expert. You're a social media genius. I mean, you want to tell it what it's going to act as. And then you also want to give it, you know, your objective. You know, what do you want the AI to produce for you? So you want a three email series on, you know, how to launch your next course. Um, you want to give it very specific objective. And then you want to give it parameters. You want to let, like, what format are, do you want? What tone, the voice, structure? Um, you want to tell it, you know, this email is meant to be direct. This email 
um, is meant to be playful. This email is meant to be educational. Um, you want to let it know exactly what you want. And then you want to give it samples and styles. So like one of the one of the key things, if you want AI to produce output that sounds like you, you're gonna have to give it examples of how you sound. So if you do YouTube videos or you do blog posting or you're creating, um, if you post a lot on Facebook like status updates and stuff, you actually want to go and copy and paste all of those things and put it into one document. So like say you have your last 20 Facebook posts. If you're active a lot on Facebook, go copy your status updates so that you can put that into one Google Doc, give that doc to AI, tell it to analyze your brand voice via these examples. AI is going to actually actually analyze and look at how you actually talk and what you say and how you use language and what tone you use it will actually do that and be able to duplicate so that when you come back and say I want you to write me a post about X it's going to take that brand voice and create a post on that topic but sound like you and that's what actually makes AI like so helpful like I can't tell you how much time it saves. The more you can um, train your AI, the easier it is to start producing content or whatever it is you're trying to do with it, the better it will be able to help you. Um, you also want to, if you think about it, um, if you put all of these together, so, so think about like if you're over here chatting with ChatGPT and you say, hey, I need you to write me an email for my newsletter. Well, first of all, that doesn't give it much information. It's going to come back with a bunch of generic ideas based on what it thinks you want instead of preparing an actual um, prompt for it. Like, you are a role who specializes in a skill set and you're helping me do this for an audience that is this. Here's the context, the rules, and then sample of my writing. So, like, if you actually put this into, like, application, you can actually say, like, your digital marketer specializes in email writing for course creators. You're helping me write a three-part email welcome sequence for my new AI for Beginners email course. The audience is solopreneurs with no tech background. Each email should be under 300 words and written in a casual first person voice using the writing style as a guide. And then what I would do is I would create a Google Doc link that you could put samples of your writing. If you have a YouTube channel, go and pull the transcripts of several of your videos, give it, you know, put them all on a Google Doc and let AI analyze the way you talk. So even like with mine, like I was thinking like I use the word literally a lot. I go, um, I do, like, I do a lot of that stuff. AI is going to recognize how I sound and it's actually going to bring me back results that sound similar to me. So like I used to actually be like, hey, write me an email that will sell this. And then I'd read it and I was like, nah, it's very generic. But then when I started training it, one with like different copywriting styles, and then I put my stuff in there, it tripped me out. I'll have to show you guys the examples sometime. Um, but I was like, oh wow, like when I read it, I was like, that does sound like I wrote that. It, it It's scary, but it also is going to help you to stay genuine to who you are too. So everybody's talking about, you know, people, everything is going to be fake or AI or whatever. I was like really is just going to be a tool to aid people in getting their content out there faster, but it still can be genuine as long as you're training it with your personality and your, um, your sense of humor, your, you know, your, uh, sound tone, things like that. AI is still going to fit your narrative or your, um, your goals. So, I mean, don't be freaked out by, um, AI completely like changing who you are or whatever, but it can just help so much more. So like I had it write me um, a couple of blog posts and then I was like, eh, that doesn't really sound like me. So then I went and I posted a couple of um, 
like, because I, I do have several Facebook posts, so I copied and pasted just my posts, and I said, just for tone and clarification and how I talk, can you analyze the way I write, and then rewrite this post sounding like me. And when I started reading it, I was like, oh, wow, that sounds like I actually wrote this. This is really good. <laughs> so, like I said, you can train AI, but I would start with something like, like, crops and you can come up with something else if it's just easy crops was easy for me to remember like okay i gotta give it context i have to assign it a role i have to give it an objective so it knows what i want and have to give it some parameters and then i want to give it a sample and style of how i want it to sound so that it stays true to me <laughs> and so like this was just an easy way for me to put that all together um and so let me see i, I got some notes down here i just want to make sure i have everything um, but yeah, if you want a copy of that, the link's in the description. Also, I have a Facebook group over here um, that um, I'm basically, I'm going to start helping people just get better at prompting. Um, prompt engineering is going to be the thing. So if you can use AI better than other people, you will be a valuable resource for people. And you should be able to... Um, you know, build out these processes so much easier. Like if you're trying to build a business, like right now I'm using AI to build a lot of the products, digital uh, courses and like teachings with one of my social media companies and how fast I'm building this information out for my um, email list is crazy. And the content is so good because I'm actually taking like, I'm having the AI trained and analyzing books and feeding it courses on how to do all of this stuff and then producing products that basically is giving outputs based on what it's learned to where I don't even have to learn all this stuff. I'm creating the product based on the education I'm giving it. And it is so cool. Like I use Claude for that. So like I did ask people, you know, what they wanted to learn. And obviously chat GPT was the largest language model that everybody wants to learn. And then I was actually surprised. Not many people. I think I might've been the only one who said Claude. Um, Claude is like, that might, like, it's it's back and forth between my one and two. I love ChatGPT. I love Claude. Um, I just started playing a little bit with uh, Gemini. I use DeepSeek a lot for, like, really, um, bit, like, deep research. Um, I've used Perplexity, um, things like that. So, like, people are wanting to learn different things. So, we'll go over that. Obviously, ChatGPT and Claude are going to be the ones I know the most about because it's the ones I use the most. Um, but if you want, you can join this group over here. Um, just request access and I will let you in. The link will be in the description as well. Um, but I will, uh, what I'm going to do on the next video is I am going to actually walk through one of the products I created for my social media company using Claude and how I fed it the information in the book. And then they produced a product for me on the back end from the data it learned. And it was awesome. It's actually going to end up turning into a really big project. So it'll be obviously some, I'll have something that I give away free and then there'll be a paid product. And then there will also be, um, I'm going to turn it into a continuity thing where people are paying a monthly access to access the bigger product that is building. And everything is being done with AI. I don't know how to code. I don't know how to do this. And when I hit a roadblock, I literally say, Hey, AI, how do I do this? And it, helps me fix whatever I'm doing and I'm going to be going through that whole process so I will give you guys some ideas on the next video on how to do that so stay tuned and we will see you on the next video like make a comment subscribe do all that cool stuff but we'll see you guys on the next video